beat. We dedicate your temple like the Maccabees. Like the Maccabees. Like the Maccabees. Like the Maccabees. Lineage like up all you priests. Like the Maccabees. Like the Maccabees. Like the Maccabees. Lineage up all you priests. Forever, right? Where my soul, not me now. Right, your soul. How do we live forever? Read up. You a pastor, right? You a pastor? I am. You should be able to tell us, young folk, how do we get the kingdom of heaven? How do we live forever? Like you just said, our souls. How do we get our souls to live forever? Uh, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, being baptized in his name. Two hours later. You got that? Uh, I confess with my mouth, uh -huh. in my heart, that Jesus, I'm the Son of God, mm -hmm. died on the cross. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Sins. And that's it. No, sir. That ain't it. Okay. He rose on the third day. Rose on the third day. Okay. Went on to heaven to uh -huh. be on high with the Father. Okay. And then that's it. And then I'm good. I ain't good yet. Okay. I'm trying to hear y'all. I'm gonna see when I when do I when do I get the kingdom of heaven? That's what I'm waiting for. Bring it on. You got that. Uh, Cause you said a lot. You said I got to confess. I got to be baptized. I got to be something else. And what else? Well, I think you got to be born again. Born again. Okay. Uh, and then, as I say, you got to. God's gonna give you an assignment. Watch this. I'm gonna encompass everything you said with one scripture. Bring Here it out. Bring it out. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. Right, so this man came to Christ and said, what must I do to get eternal life? The same question I just proposed to you, right? right? Watch this. And he said unto him, uh -huh. why callest thou me good? Uh -huh. There is none good but one. There is none good but one, who is that? That is God. So Christ gave reverence to the Father, right? right? There's only one good and that's, that's, that's right. the heavenly Father. Come on. But if thou will enter into life, if you will get the kingdom of heaven, this is what you must do. Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. You must keep God's commandments. That's, right. That's the only way to get eternal life. Right. Do you understand that? I understand that. Now, how long have you been a pastor? About 11 years. 11 years, okay. Let's get some laws and see if you've ever heard of these laws that we must keep. Bring okay? it out. Bring it out. Give me... Numbers chapter 15 verse 38. Let's start there. Because we're going to read some laws and see if you are applying them in your life. Right. All right? Because as a pastor, we're supposed to go to you. Your job is to what? Feed the flock. That's right. right. Feed the flock with God's word. Right. And tell them how to get eternal life. Right. Right? right. Let's see. Read that. <laughs> Numbers chapter 15 verse 38. Uh-huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. This whole Bible is for and was made for the children of Israel. That's right. That's right. No other people. So that's, right. that's another thing. If you teach outside of that, that's wrong. Right. right. Because the Bible's only for Israel. Right. Well, we can prove that. Keep reading. Oh, you right. And bid them uh -huh. that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. And bid them, meaning command them to put fringes on the borders of their garment. That's right. right. That goes for men and women and children. Right. All of Israel. Right. Right. Throughout their generation. How long? Throughout their generation. What does throughout their generation mean? Bring it out. Forever. Forever. That's right. That means what? That that law is still in place today, right? Yeah, that's right. That law is still in place. Yeah, it's still in place today. That's why I went there first. Okay, to show you that even though that's in the Old Testament, it clearly says that throughout your generation, meaning it still has to be done uh, today. That's right. right. Okay, keep reading. And that they put upon the fringe uh -huh. of the borders. A ribbon of blue. And that you put upon that fringe, very descriptive. You put a ribbon of blue on that fringe. That's right. right. Okay, come on. And it shall be unto you for a friend, uh -huh. that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And what? And do them. And actually do them. That's, That's right. right. That is one of the biggest things of our people. We have the zeal, but it's not according to lot. It's That's not right. according to right. Get that real quick. Uh, Romans. Is it 10 and 1 or 10 and 2? 10 and, 10 and 2. Get that real quick. 
Our people have the zeal for God. Right. We're the most zealous people right. when it comes to trying to get in in, in, in in the right spirit with God. Right. But we don't do what he says. That's right. We don't do what he says. It's just that simple. We hard-headed and a stubborn people. That's why we're in the conditions that we're in. That's, right. That's why we're in the ghettos in the world. That's why we can we kill each other over a woman, over sneakers, over over a territory. Right. We don't own nothing on this damn block. What do we own? Right. Everything that's that that is to be owned is owned by the other nation. That's right. right. That's right. You don't own this gas station, right. but you come up here and I'll shoot you at the drop of a dime. Right over a, a corner, a gas station, I don't own. I don't get no percentage of that's off of these people. That's right. And 99% of the time, it's not our people. Someone else owns it. Right. 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 You understand right. what I'm saying? Oh, Read I, that. I, I, I understand. Romans chapter 10, verse 2. Uh -huh. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of... We have a zeal for God. Read. That they have a zeal of God, uh -huh. but not according to knowledge. But it's not according to the commandments. That's, That's right. right. Let's get right. knowledge real quick. Read that. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7 uh -huh. for the priest's lips for the priest's lips meaning a pastor right should keep knowledge should keep what knowledge uh-huh and they should seek the law at his mouth they should seek the law at that pastor's mouth That's but if right. you don't know the law how can you feed the flock Bring it up. one thing we, we no longer under the law i knew you was gonna say that Bring that's why up. i went Galatians to one. watch this but listen, you now you got to go. That's why I went to Numbers 15 and 38. That's why I went there first. Because I knew he was going to say the law. The God loves the way. It's Matthew 5. Right. You're not an Israelite? Okay, let me ask you this. How, how did your forefathers get here to America? I ain't got no idea. How, you don't know how your forefathers got here to America? What did they tell you? They were brought here uh, on slave ships. On slave ships. Y'all heard what he said? Yes, Sisters, y'all heard what he said? He said he's not an Israelite. Brother, on the phone. He said he's not an Israelite. But I asked him, how did your forefathers get here? He said, on what? Slave ships, right? Now, if I could read that out of the Bible, that would make us what? The Israelite. Israelite. Yes, right? 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 Prove him wrong. Get Deuteronomy 28, 16. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. And now we're going to show you that God's laws are not done away with. That's right. They're still in place today. That's why I went to Numbers 15 and 38 first, because they're throughout our generations, meaning forever. They're right. still in place today. Right. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. Y'all listening? You heard that, sis? You didn't hear it. Sis, I want you to pay attention, sis. Yeah. Look. We're giving you the greatest news you will ever hear in your life. Yes, you your brother, sister. I want y'all to pay attention. We're the greatest people on the face of the earth. That's right. But we don't act like it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to prove it to you that we hold that. As a matter of fact, read that again. One more time. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. It said, we shall go into Egypt again. We left out of Egypt. The Israelites left out of Egypt. We never went back. This is saying you're going to go there again. Right? So let's get the meaning of what Egypt is. Right? No. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. No. I am the Lord thy God, Come on. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means bondage That's or right. slavery, right? right? Now go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Watch that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. With what? With ships. With ships. Who did that happen to? Who was brought on cargo slave ships from one place to another? Who did that happen to? I'm asking you. The Israelites. The Israelites. Right. But I'm saying today, what would it, what would we be called today? So that's right. Which makes you the people of the book. Right. That's right. right. Scripture alone makes you the people of the book. Right. I don't have to read another scripture. We are the Israelites. Right. Right. Point blank. Now, I want to get some laws for y'all before y'all leave. All right? I want to get some laws real quick. Get first, first, uh, you know what I want. First Timothy. Yeah. Two and nine. Get that real quick. I want to get some laws for y'all because as God's people, as God's chosen people, 
We're supposed to be keeping God's law. That's, right. That's what got us in the situation we're in today. Right. That's what got us put on cargo slave ships right. and sold to another nation. Right. Right. Not keeping God's law. Right. The problem is today, our enemy has taught these so-called pastors that the laws are done away with. Right. Right. That's a very smart tactic right. Right. to do and say, let's keep these people in sin. That way that God won't fight for them. Right. Right. That way they'll stay on the bottom of society. Right. Right. Do you understand? That's very, very clever. Read that. First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. Well, matter of fact, get Deuteronomy 22 about the first. Get that first. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Let me ask you this first. Is you love God? You love God, right? You love God? You sure? Of course, I know you're talking to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you. You love God, sis? Okay, my sister. First John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. Now, we're about to read what the love of God is, right? Okay, this goes for you too, brother. You say you love God too, right? Okay, watch this. That we keep his commandment. That we do what? Keep his commandment. The way you show God love is by keeping his commandment. That's right. right. There is no other way. Right. You can't uh, give God a hug. You can't send them flowers. Right. You can't pick up the phone and call them and tell them, God, I love you. Right. Right. right? You got to keep his commandments. Right. Now, let's get some commandments and see if we really truly love God. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. No. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The scripture says a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What is... What pertains to a man that a woman wear? That women wear today. And it's something that women wear today that they didn't wear in the 50s and 60s. Pants. Say it again. Pants. Pants. That's right. Pants. Yeah. Think about it now. Watch this. Well, I'm Sister. Sister, listen. What'd you say, sis? I'm I, curious. No, I I'm think, curious. Come I said, well, I'm just, I just keep this over at God because I like pants and shorts. What? So you telling me you just gonna keep this obeying God? I said I, I said I guess that's what I do. Is really? keep this obeying God because I wear pants and shorts. Okay. Ain't that what you just saying to me that that's disobeying God? Come that on. is disobeying okay. God. Okay. And I have on shorts right now, so that's my cue to walk off. I like y'all have. All right, watch, watch this. Sit. Sit. Come out, y'all ready? Okay. Yeah. I'm all right. Okay. 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 Yeah. See the same way? Our uh, people are stubborn and rebellious people. That's right. That's why this is going to get Zephaniah 1 and 8. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice is when Christ comes back. Right? We understand that God, Christ is coming back to That's judge right. this place. That's right. Right? In the day of his judgment. Read. I will punish the princes and the king's children. I will punish. I will. Not uh, how I feel. I will punish. Bring it up. The princes and the king's children. Uh -huh. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And all those that are clothed with strange apparel. Right. That's right. Our people don't love God. Right. That's right. Right? That's right. They That's don't. Right. I just, they, they hate him. Right. That's right. That's a simple law. Right. That's very simple. God right. says, don't put on pants. Let me go buy a dress. Right. God says, don't eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. I'm not going to eat those things. Right. There's plenty of other things to eat. God says, let me keep the Sabbath. I keep the Sabbath. Right. Do you understand that, sister? Let, let me finish that scripture for you, okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Bring it up. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right, so we understand that that's what? Pants, right? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. It ain't no different for the man. Right. If we was up here in dresses, y'all wouldn't even stop and talk to us. Right. That's right. Bring it you up. would say those are some effeminate men that are off. Right. right. Because it it's confusing. Right. right. Do you understand that, sister? That's confusing to the most high. If we would be up here in dresses. Okay? Right. And people that do those things, they're going to be judged when Christ comes back. That's, That's right. strange That's right. to the most high. Right. That don't look right. Right. That's right. Where's that uh, little sign? Let me get that sign. Here's an example, right? 
Yeah. You as a woman, which one uh, do you identify with on this side? The one on this side, right? The one that has on a what? Dress. A dress, yes. right? So subconsciously, every time you go to the bathroom, you agree with that. Right. I'm supposed to have on a dress. That's right. right. But society here tells us what? Otherwise, to keep us in sin. Right. Right. Listen, these other nations know we God's chosen people. That's, That's right. right. They know that we God's chosen people. That's why they got our foot on our neck. Right. That's right. You understand that? Uh, What's the other scripture? Modest apparel. Get that real quick. Then I'm going to deal with you. Don't go nowhere, bro. I got a scripture for you, okay? I want you to hear. Because you said you've known that you've been in the truth for about a year, right? Close to a year. Close to a year. Watch this. This for you, sis. Read. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Get out. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is modest apparel, sis? Not tight jeans, right? I don't know what tight jeans. Mo no, I'm saying modest apparel means what? Well. What does it mean to be modest? If a woman is modestly dressed, what does that mean? I just be nicely Bring it out. dressed. Nicely dressed, meaning what? Not revealing what? My open eyes. Exactly. Yes, right. that's, ex that's what the scripture is saying. Right. That's no. simple, right? When you go out in public, cover yourself up. Right. That's for your husband to look at. Right. Right. Not every man when you go to the store. Right. right. You understand that? Modest apparel, that's a law. Now, real quick, I'm going to deal with you. Get uh uh Sirach five and seven real quick. Sirach five and seven. Because it's imperative that we turn back to what's your name again, brother? Michael. Michael. It's imperative that we turn back to God immediately. Right. We don't have time. Right. The time is short. That's right. You said earlier about all the bombings and all that stuff that's going on in the other parts of the world. Why are those things going on? Because uh, the real people ain't over them. Exactly. Right. So since you know that, when we read Matthew 24, it tells you about rumors of wars and those and those right. things, meaning we're getting close to the end. Right. right. So you got to make what? You got to make what? Make haste. Hey, he know the scriptures, but I'm going to read it for you again. Now you've been marked now. You, been, you ain't never met the prophets on the street. Now you've been marked now. Bring it out. Okay, read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 5, verse 7. Uh -huh. You following along, Brother Michael? You following along? Yeah, I don't work on, I don't work Saturdays. No, I'm saying following along with what we're reading right now. I want you to listen. I want you to listen up, okay? All right. All right. All right. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 5, verse 7. Uh -huh. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. It says make no tarrying. What that mean, Mike? Yeah, make no tarrying. What does that mean? No way. Don't wait, right? Watch this, read. And put not off from day to day. Don't put serving the Most High God off from day to day. Why? For suddenly uh -huh. shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. For suddenly, out of nowhere, the wrath of the Lord comes forth. Right. Brother Mike, read. And in thy security. And just when you think everything is good, Thou shall be destroyed. Thou shall be destroyed, Brother Michael. That's why we out here. Right. We out here to wake our people up for the destruction right. that's coming. That's right. Right. You understand that? So you knowing eight, nine, ten months ago is, is not a good thing. Because that destruction could come at any time. That's you understand right. you can't kindle no fire. Matter of fact, get me um, Leviticus 23 and 3. Because you're not fellowshipping with no other congregation, right? No other group. Watch this. I'm going to show you another thing that you must do according to the Sabbath. All right? Read that. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest uh -huh. and holy convocation. A what? And holy convocation. What does that mean? The, sa the Sabbath day is supposed to be a holy convocation. What does that mean? Holy convocation. I guess that. Like a gathering or something like Gathering, <laughs> exactly. That's a commandment. You must be gathering on the Sabbath with like-minded people. That's right. That's an order from God. That's a commandment. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So every Sabbath that goes by, you're in the midst of sin. Right. Because you're supposed to be fellowshipping. Right. Right. Right? And this is why, Brother Mike, this is why we must keep the Sabbath day. I'm about to read it to you. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25. Uh -huh. Now, not forsaking. The assembling of ourselves together. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Why? As the manner of some is. As 
you were doing previously, right? Read. But exhorting one another. But exhorting one another, come on. And so much the more. Even more so today, why? As ye see the day approaching. As you see Christ coming back sooner and sooner. Right. You need to be fellowshipping with other people. Right. That's right. Why? Because it's checks and balances. Right. If this brother's going off, I'm the one that's going to help him. Get uh, two is better than one. I'm the one that's going to put him to the side and go, brother, you bugging. You, the scripture says this. Right. You see what I'm saying? I may save him from his death. That's and right. likewise for me, when I'm going off, he's going to grab me and go, brother, according to the scriptures, you're going off. Bro. Right. You see what I'm saying? But if you by yourself, you can't do that. Right. There's nobody to help you. I agree. There's nobody to check you when you're going off. Right. And not to belittle you or make you feel it any certain type of way, but a lot of our people do that because they know once they come into serving the Most High God, you're going to have to change. That's right. God. You're going to have to change. Because yeah. in IUIC, we're not going to allow that thing. That's right. If you come to serve the Lord, you're going to have to keep His commandments. Right. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Yeah. No, two are better than one. You see what the scripture says, Brother Mike? Two are better than one for the reason I just said. Watch this. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Uh -huh. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. You see that? If he falls, I'm able to pick him up. Right. If he falls, I'm able to pick him up. That's, right. Right. That's what this whole thing is about. Right. right. All right. Gathering ourselves together. You understand that? Get Zephaniah. Was that it on that? No. Keep reading. But woe to him that is alone. But woe. What does woe mean? Destruction. That's this brother been watching our classes because everything we pulling, he knows what it means. Right. Yeah. So I know you've been watching, bro. I can tell. Right. I can tell you've been watching and you've probably been studying a little bit. All praises for that. But there's just some missing components that you got to put together to make this thing whole. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Keep reading. Read that again. But woe to him that is alone uh -huh. when he falleth. For he have not another to help him up. You see that? Whoa, destruction unto that brother that's by himself. He ain't got nobody to help him up. Right. He ain't got nobody to go through the scriptures and show him. Right. This is where you're going on. Come right. back. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org